One of the quintessential drive-in kind of guys to me is Frank Henenlotter. Not only because of the anointing from the patron saint of drive-ins himself, Joe Bob Briggs, but also from a horror core memory. Long before I knew about the fabled 42nd Street in New York and all the magical movies that were shown there, I was introduced to Belial and his brother Dwayne on grainy VHS from Video Unlimited. That's the magical part about being a horror fan. My brothers weren't even particularly fond of the first movie, but knew it was an important piece of independent horror cinema. Shot for 35000 and released in April of 1982, Basket Case is now enshrined in MoMA, that's the Museum of Modern Art, and has been released on Blu-ray so that everyone can see it in high-def glory. Now personally, I think that movie's made for grimy VHS or 35mm distribution in a CD theater, but to each their own. Love what you love. That wasn't the last we heard from the two conjoined siblings, though, as Basket Case 2 and 3 were released in 1990 and 1991. While these two movies fit together better with each other than the first movie in tone, effects, and even story, you can watch them separately. Similar to how Part 2 seems to retcon the ending of Part 1, the beginning of 3 just recaps the ending of Part 2. I personally like to think that the two brothers actually die at the end of the first movie when they fall off the building, and the next two movies are a sort of what-if in their dying thoughts. Hen and Lauder isn't for everyone, that's for sure, but he sure has a fun catalog, especially considering how small it is. He started with the short film Slash of the Knife in 1972, which is also the first on-screen appearance of Kevin Van Hennenreich. Hentenreich, who of course plays Dwayne in more things than you would expect. It would be that short that would get interest in Frank, and he was able to make Basket Case. From there, we would see the two Basket Case sequels, Frank and Hooker, Brain Damage, and Bad Biology. The one I'd recommend to any horror fan, however, is his documentary on Herschel Gordon Lewis, another director who has a bit of an acquired taste. The movie recaps the end of part two with Dwayne and Belial staying with Granny Ruth and her other social outcasts. Dwayne has again thought he's found love, but snaps when the girl he likes turns out to also be like the rest. He pushes her out a window to her death and then reattaches his brother to his side. That movie itself is a little bit of a fun motif with Todd Browning's freaks. There's a reporter and her cameraman who want to expose and make money off Granny's friends, but the group turns on her and tricks her into a fake interview with Belial. He scratches her face off to make her one of them, and also kills the cameraman. Much of the rest of that movie is just okay, while Belial does find his love. It's part three, The Progeny, that I think needs a second look. Both of these are horror comedies, but I think part three skates the line better and makes you care about these people more. With death comes life as Belial has impregnated his girlfriend and she's ready to give birth. Dwayne has been locked in a padded cell and Belial isn't speaking to him telepathically or in person anymore so he feels very trapped. Why would you say anything? Why would you talk to me? So trapped, in fact, that he spends much of the remainder of the movie trying to run away before eventually just wanting his brother back again. Everyone piles into the bus to head over to a doctor's house that Granny knows, and almost all of the group is the same from the previous film, but the special effects team was able to sneak in a few new costumes as well. Some of the effects and makeup may look a bit rubbery, but it mostly works. The whole movie feels like a fever dream inside David Cronenberg's Nightbreed. Dwayne tries to convince everyone on the bus that he's back to normal, or at least his normal, but they leave him in a straitjacket for a while. Kevin Van Hentenreich does a great job here, and even Hennenlotter says he plays it straight in a crazy world. Kevin didn't do a ton in his career, in fact he plays Dwayne in over half of his feature film roles, but he does great here. While I prefer him in the first movie and all of its grit, he's the closest thing we have to an avatar for the audience in this film. We as the audience are introduced to the doctor before the rest of the group as the town sheriff comes to drop off a toy for the doc's gifted son. We don't get a great look at the kid, but get the feeling that he belongs on the bus more so than his father does. There are times he won't even show himself to me. Thanks for the coffee, little house! The gang stops at a store and Granny has a confrontation with the sheriff as she's double parked while Dwayne tries to get help from a seemingly kind pedestrian. Of course, this girl isn't kind, and she isn't just some citizen either. She's the daughter of the sheriff. Miss Ruth, I'd like you to meet my daughter, Opal. Hi. They get to the doc's house, and it turns out that the son of the doctor is also the son of Granny. We also get a good look at him this time, and he has a blobby mass with multiple appendages. Granny lets Dwayne out of the straitjacket, and he bails immediately in one of the funnier moments of the film. 
Unfortunately for that kind doctor, Belial has a sort of PTSD flashback of the doctors that treated him wrong in separating him from his brother, and he mortally wounds the kindly old found physician. Oh. They still get the babies though, all 12 of them, as Granny and Hal's son are able to help with the delivery. As an aside, I thought Little Hal was probably the worst actor in the movie, and it turns out he's mostly a behind-the-camera guy. The executive produced some pretty big shows like Third Rock from the Sun and Grounded for Life. Third Rock from the Sun is weird enough to fit right into today's movie. After he escapes, Dwayne finds the sheriff's daughter again, Opal, and to the surprise of no one really, she has him locked up and turns out to be pretty awful. Lost in this is Belial locked in his titular basket having a weird fantasy. Something of a metaphor for the finality of having children, I suppose. You wake in there? The rest of the group starts celebrating while the deputies go after Belial to get the reward. They show up to the house and tragically kill Belial's mate and steal all the babies. Dwayne realizes that he's screwed up and just wants his brother back. Opal has a kink for bad boys, because of course she does, and tries to get with Dwayne, but he just uses this as a distraction to escape. The movie really does subvert your expectations. Opal not only being a scumbag, but also a sex fiend is kind of strange. Then you have Hal dying, and what happens near the end all come out of left field in a movie that is about as far into left field as you can get. The deputies bring the babies back to the jail, and I'll be damned if they aren't kind of cute. The effects here work, and they don't. When it was just Belial in the first movie, it was frightening and he was kept hidden well. When he's just one of many, he immediately looks kind of goofy, as does his mate. The rest of the family looks incredible and out of a nightmare in terms of design. The sheriff goes to confront the doctor when he learns everything that's gone down, and Belial has come to the jail to get all of his babies. Dwayne realizes what's going on and tries to warn them, but it's all too late. Belial and his basket have been brought in. What happens next is one of the strangest bits of gore I've ever seen. I'm not even entirely sure we can show you any of it, but look it up. You don't even have to watch the whole movie because it's wild and worth it on its own. Interestingly, and unfortunately, they actually decided to cut out a ton of script pages, 11 in fact, as producers wanted the movie to be less gory. I think this is a huge mistake, because the fans that want to watch this movie want as much gore as possible. It's not like you're going to get people that weren't originally going to see Basket Case 3 to go see it by removing some of the gore. This movie leans heavily into the comedy aspect, so why not make the gore, which is already cartoonish in its execution, more prevalent? Opal ends up getting shot and dying in the scuffle, and she also squishes one of the babies. Dwayne gets Belial out, but he's been shot and needs medical attention fast. Dwayne tries to undo everything he's done the first two movies and part of this film by taking him and Belial back to Little Hal for help. The last 20 minutes of the movie become a nice callback to the first film, while the brothers go after and kill the doctors involved in their separation. Here they decide to go after the remaining deputies and the sheriff. But of course, being the third film in this weird franchise with a much bigger budget, we need to go much bigger. Hal makes Belial his own aliens-inspired mech suit that he uses to get his revenge. He kills the last two deputies, although disappointingly mostly off-screen, before having a final confrontation with the sheriff who had planned to kill him all along. The exoskeleton is equal parts glorious and ridiculous, and the last fight does its best to deliver. Belial looks like he may end up losing, but his children attack and kill the sheriff before he can finish the job. The group finally appears on a talk show that aims to expose supposed freaks, and they take out the host and destroy the set while Granny sends a final warning to society that they will no longer run, no longer hide, and the world is now theirs. It's a final metaphor, if one that kind of beats you over the head with its message, and ends the trilogy well. No more hiding for Dwayne and Belial. Sadly, this was Lauder's final film for 17 years. He would never make a major film of impact as anyone willing to back him just wanted more Basket Case, something that Frank had zero interest in doing. He claims this is his most disappointing movie and regrets making it so soon after the relative success of Brain Damage, Frankenhooker, and Basket Case 2 in a span of just two years. It's not his best, but it deserves another look. Well-timed comedy mixed with really fun makeup and effects, all while making yourself comfortable being uncomfortable. 
It's available on Tubi often, and Synapse Films even made it one of their special Blu-ray releases. Open the basket just one more time and accept what you find inside. Hi, can I see you for a minute? 